Hi YouTube, welcome back. Well, today you're in for a different kind of an adventure. So last night, I went to use my brand new toy for the first time. And Instapot Vortex Plus it comes with a rotisserie function. It's a seven in one thing. I'll do a full review later, but it has this cool little rotisserie basket, and that's how it suggests cooking fries. So I had some like steak fry wedges and put them in there. First round went great. Second round, I put in there and it wouldn't turn, wouldn't rotate anymore. And the button to let it come out, didn't wanna let it come out. So, I'm going to leave you with my husband for the rest of this video to try and figure out what went wrong. All right. So, first thing that came off was the door and there are, are beveled hinges. Can you see the angle on there? There are three slots. This sits in those three slots at like an oddball angle and lifts straight out. So once you open it, lift up gently and then at about this angle, it'll come up out because of that bevel. Take the door off. And then <clears throat> on the bottom there are 10 Phillips screws. These are the 10 that hold the bottom on. And then <clears throat> once you take those 10, oh, it just snapped back on. <laughs> there are snaps along the front. And it's still attached by wires, but there are snaps that you can see here gives you access to one, two, three, four, five, and six screws that you pull out of the bottom. I'm just gonna set this back up on here so it's not scratching up the countertop. On the top and bottom of your side, this was a tricky little thing here. There's six points on the bottom and the top. And the bottom, you can see, sits flush and flat with the machine. The top one, it sticks out. And on the very front where the door is, there's a curve. And you can't miss that. That lets you know which order you're putting it away in. But, oh, very important part about getting this off is these three holes on either side are guided into place on the side and I don't know if you can see this little part that this little protrusion there are two on both sides that snap into these notches these pins and grooves here are just to locate the plastic as it's sliding back on so once you get the side off I, I pried the top piece also located on there with snaps to the front of your machine where you touch it and play with it and show it a good time and all that. There are snaps with notches that lock down into these holes. You just carefully pry up starting from the back and then to the front once you once you get the four towards the back done, these ones on the side will give. And there are two at the very bottom, and you can't miss this cable that just unsnaps. Once you've got that apart, that lets you take this off. And then on the top of this one is still on the machine. There's four screws that you pull off of there that let this come off in each corner here. So these are all Phillips screws, number two. So you can't can't go wrong. Options today were the extra long two and the stubby two. I couldn't find the medium one. Oh, and a flathead pry bar, aka screwdriver. That I used to 
pry at the sides of that. Uh, the rotisserie wasn't rotisserizing, and the motor, there are two flat sides here where this inner lug slides down on. You can see that there is a spot where there should be a screw, or they gave the possibility of screw. That hole is tapped, and this has a spot in it where it looks like there could be a screw, but there's not. And then this gets attached to a piece of plastic out here. I have this plastic holding the screws right now that attaches it to the side. Let me set it up here and carefully get these screws out. There are four Phillips screws that hold this spring box to the inside here. This spring literally just sits up against the frame. This tucked in here. And that motor mounts to the back of this, and <clears throat> this is how you get to release the rotisserie. The problem was it wasn't releasing the rotisserie, so I figured maybe I was going to look in there and find a, this part stripped out, but literally the only thing that holds it in there is a couple of notches on the side of this rides in that groove. And that's the only thing that holds it in there but you can see that this cam is keyed in such a way that this will fit on every 90 degrees it'll slide on just fine but when you try to turn it in the direction that that machine is supposed to turn it does not want to turn freely but getting into it was a trick we went to look on YouTube to find a video on how to get it apart, and surprisingly no one has taken it apart that I've seen. So this is enough to get you into trouble. Hopefully I give you enough to get yourself back out. See how this hits here. This, this plastic has got a little bit of flex to it. I wouldn't force it, but just get it close and make sure these pegs are in front where they need to go. And line up these three slots. this way you should hear it snap when they locate I have to lift it up out of the base because I just set it in here there's a tiny tab down here yeah oh should, there it goes should go without saying that you don't want to do this with it hot there's, there's nothing to keep your hand off of the burner. And make sure the dingus end isn't stuck in the wall. Because you don't want, uh, as my favorite YouTuber would say, you don't want the angry pixies to jump out of the wall and bite you. Let me take it out of the bottom here. around so you can see what I'm trying to do here. Alright, right here are these three holes and we're lining it up to those three tabs and laying it back down flat against this and then pushing it forward, bless you miss, pushing it forward until it snaps. And if you look down here at the side you'll see a very small plastic tab. It's tucked in right come here that lines up on the bottom so once you have this snapped back around you can replace the 12 screws that hold the side to 
into a frame. And like any screw that you're putting back into plastic, always turn it backwards a little bit first to make sure you're not stripping out what little plastic is left. And I never tighten them all the way down until I've got all six of them located. And then go back around and snug them down. zero moisture protection on this PCB inside here. So if you're going to clean one of these things up, whenever it's all put together and you want to take a rag and wipe it down, make sure that it's just a damp rag. And you don't want it soft and wet because it'll get right underneath of this edge, drip straight down on your electronic components, cause a failure or a short or worse a fire. All right, this slot here, wide one out of the three you'll see I'm gonna put this thing back on this gets fed up through that slot how that sits on top of that post whenever it's lined up it should sit almost snug like a puzzle piece and you can get your screw all right there's a notch here and you can see that all these metal posts are up towards the top of this if you look here, at the top of this, you'll see the hole where that's supposed to go and a little nub that lines up with that notch. It's your standard only fits one way click. And then turn this like this so you can see. Set it in the front. I have to lift up on the top a little bit so. This has to come all the way up here. Now this stuff is made out of a flexible plastic so that this is possible. But push down the front until it snaps on the front. And make sure everything's lined up back here. And you just hear it snap together. Make sure they're all lined up. two snaps on either side of the middle of this and I gotta tuck it under one or the other and then it should click shut just the way it belongs. Rotisserize and we has rotation. Well for now it's rotating. No burning sensations tell the fans running you can feel it blowing air out of the back huh all that fun we didn't even let the smoke out <laughs> so it's down over here. the button is still working fine yeah that was our major complaint was that that would not release the other attachment Props and gadgets and wizardry, oh my. All right. Holy funhouse oven. Uh, what did you hit? I hit air fry. Oh, yeah, okay. Start. I had food. It knows it's empty. <laughs> no. Just open. I'll smart it again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, see how that lets go? It's probably what happened is if, if you did that with food in it, and it wouldn't line back up. Wow, that, that thing's a little closer to the element than the rotisserie uh -huh. thing was. I'm going to put this back on the straight. 
the little plastic part on that motor has a countersink on it like there's supposed to be a machine screw in there and like I don't know if it, this one just missed his turn in that part of the assembly line or what was going on with it but there's not one there and I think maybe that could have been part of what happened was if you hit that release with the food in it and that basket spins free and it doesn't want to let it go this the drive end of this is square so as soon as you pull that other end off and all the weight lets it turn it's not going to line up in the little doohickey thing of a box it won't let it re-engage so it'll feel like it's getting stuck I guess what I'm saying is be ready to pull that out with whatever oven gloves or mitts you're using well this is the attachment to the ah, thing okay. actually all right so if you're using your dealy whopper to pull a thingamajig make sure you hold the button down until you got your nummies outside of the machine yeah, there you go. You can hold four marshmallows on that one. <laughs> one in the middle. But that was tricky. It's hard to get that one. <laughs> and remember, life's an adventure. Thanks for getting caught up in mine. God bless. God bless.